Good afternoon, folks. The mic is on, apparently. Uh, welcome to uh, real-time application integration at scale with Salesforce platform events. Uh, I'm Rob Zare. I work on the product management team at Heroku. I work on our data services. And I'm joined today by Morris Hall, who's a principal engineer at Heroku. Howdy. <laughs> So I'm sure you've seen this slide many times during the conference. In this session, we are actually going to spend quite a bit of time talking about uh, an integration service, a new one inside of Heroku called Heroku Connect Events that is currently in pilot. So it is not GA. So the disclaimer and you know, guidance around not to make purchasing decisions based on software that's not GA is, is very applicable here. The agenda for today, we're going to cover uh, just a quick overview of Salesforce platform events. Uh, I'll only ask one question to you, and it's going to be now. It's just, how many folks have familiarity with Salesforce platform events here? OK, so not much. So good. So we'll, we'll spend some time. We're going to set some context with that. Then we're going to talk about this new integration service inside of Heroku called Heroku Connect Events. And then the best part of the session, I think, is going to be this great demo that Mars has created that's actually going to show you the business value of uh, real-time integration. And in particular, I think, you know, that from a customer experience standpoint. So platform events are a uh, native feature in Salesforce that enable real-time integration. And so let's get a little bit more precise. What I mean by that is real-time app or process integration. So you can have a business process. Let's say a deal closes in Salesforce. You can imagine how many other actions might hang off of that. Well, this is a way to actually build those service-to-service, uh, -service, process to process integrations. Another type of integration that you may do that you can leverage this for is data integration. So in particular, CDC, Change Data Capture, which recently went GA, is a great mechanism to basically do uh, low latency, high scale data integration. So integrating external data stores with Salesforce. And then there's one other sort of flavor of this, which I think of as you're extending the Salesforce footprint um, outside of Salesforce where it makes sense. So uh, to be more specific, I think of a situation where you have complex logic that you have to execute. Uh, but the business process lives inside of Salesforce. So let's say you're doing a credit check, right? And, that, and you model that process in Salesforce. There's a lot of reasons why you may not want to model all that logic in Salesforce, right? And it could have to do everything to do with preferences around languages and frameworks, to having it be computationally expensive, to maybe you've already stood up services that allow you to do that. So this is a great example where you can actually create an event that would say, hey, initiate a credit check for me. You'll have an external service, it could be in Heroku, hopefully it is, that's listening for that event. It will then go through n number of steps, leveraging n number of services to compute the result of that credit check. And then it will publish an event back to Salesforce and say, OK, here's the result. Here's the amount that you're approved at. Here's your rate, et cetera, et cetera. Right? And, and so this is an important thing where you've got this notion of a payload that you can customize when it comes to events doesn't apply to change data capture, but it applies to platform events. So you can choose. You have the flexibility to define the trigger, the payload. And likewise, um, when you're publishing an event, you can, uh, it, if you can firstly define that schema for the event, and then the app can just, can just publish it. So within Salesforce, again, events are a first class object. Think of it in many ways as you would a custom object. And there's multiple ways to define them. Uh, you can use Process Builder. You can use the APIs. Um, Mars is going to talk about how you actually, from a client perspective, how you listen for them. Uh, and then when you want to publish an event back, just use the REST API. So very straightforward. Uh, a lot of customization around the payload. There's an architectural uh, sort of, I don't want to say philosophy, but a pattern that underpins this type of integration model. So if you've been around in IT for a while, you have inevitably you will remember the old SOA days and message buses, right? And the benefit of sort of communicating via a bus and having loosely integrated um, 
integrations, right? Where, so they're less brittle, you can handle translations. It's a very scalable pattern. This is happening now in the world of app integration and data integration. Modern apps are becoming much, much more complex and connected, right? So um, integration patterns themselves are moving to more low latency, loosely coupled models with more of an emphasis now on actually stream processing, right? And so using Kafka as the foundation for that. So sort of you think of the old world, which is for many of us, it's the world we live in today. There'll be, you know, Many integrations, many of them are point to point. Um, so even if that creates some overhead, some rig rigidness, uh, but that's, that's the, what we're trying to get away from. When you get to the world of having a common message bus, which you get with this logical thing called the Salesforce event bus, you're now able to build these loosely connected experiences. So I may have 10 systems that are going to take action on my closed deal event, but I'm not going to define 10 integrations. I'm going to define that event. I'm going to define the schema for that event. I'm going to publish the event. And now every system that's hanging off of that can respond to it. So you can see from an integration standpoint, it's far more, far more efficient. Okay. So what we've done in Heroku, if you're familiar with Heroku Connect Data Sync, it's a product that we've had uh, GA for about five years. And what it does is it's a fully managed integration service that sits in between the Salesforce uh, core data model, so a Salesforce uh, CRM or service org, and the Heroku Postgres database. And it then manages, it supports replication of data, unidirectionally or bidirectionally. It also supports virtualization via OData. What this new service, Connect Events, does, which again is in pilot today, is that it sits between this event bus that we've been talking about in Salesforce and fully managed Heroku Kafka. So the backplane for the integration switches from being a relational database to, to Kafka, the message bus. And it's able to channel the events back and forth. And as of today, we support reading events from Salesforce and we support uh, both platform events and change data capture events. So that's the service that we've built. Um, again, it's fully managed, point and click setup, just takes a few minutes, um, very highly scalable. From a customer standpoint, when you're looking at this, again, we talked about some of those use cases. I can push my compute out to the edge, right? So if I have complex logic that I have to execute, I can push that out. If I want to build a loyalty application, let's say, and as a part of that, I need to react more or less in real time, let's say when a customer walks into my store, right, and they open my app and I want to surface a coupon and then maybe they're going to redeem that coupon for a free latte and now they're going to eventually go into the line and they're actually going to, the, you know, the PO's, uh, point of sale system has got to be ready to actually take that coupon. This is actually a real customer example. That has to happen pretty quickly, right? And this is the application needs to be integrating with Salesforce, and there's a back-end integration with the point-of-sale system. All this has to happen in real time. Data sync is not the right way to do it. Uh, so you let you model this, this, these type of things on, on events. Another thing I can do that's really interesting is I can take, I can stream the data from multiple orgs and begin to correlate that data. So I can perform analytics on that. I can do integration if I want to get a unified view of my orgs, right? A lot of potential there. And lastly, if I'm, if I'm leveraging CDC, I can push that data from Kafka. I can use, for example, the Kafka Connect framework, which you can run in Heroku, right? Leverage the connectors that are supported there and then begin to push that data if I need to into external stores uh, or uh, object stores like an S3, for example. So that's what we've built with Connect Events. Um, again, it's in pilot today after the uh, session, or if you want you know, want to email me at any time, if you're interested in joining the pilot, we'd love to have, have you join and get your feedback on it. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mars to do the, uh, show you the demo. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. Um, so I want to show you an example of 
a uh, real-time integration. So this is going to carry forward the uh, kind of loyalty uh, style application here. The idea is that uh, we have, we're running a hotel and we want to enable the housekeeping staff and the, the bookkeeping staff to be able to, of course, manage the rooms. So we're gonna do that with the, with the Lightning experience directly in Salesforce. And, uh, and then we have a consumer app, which is uh, a web app that's running on Heroku. And uh, as the staff, hotel staff, interacts, we want to be able to uh, bring visibility to the consumer, to our customer, in real time. So, uh, what that looks like here, so I'll start just by showing you that uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see our Salesforce Lightning view, and this is a custom object that we called Room. It's a very simple data model just for the sake of this demo. Um, then here on the right side, we have a web app, which right now, really, all it's going to do is show us some notifications. But the whole idea is that a customer uh, goes, uh, books a room, and when they book the room, uh, part of the business process on the front end is that this room is going to get set to booked. And so when they save this, it actually goes through a process builder flow which generates a platform event, which is a room status update. And that update uh, is subscribed to by our uh, reactive Heroku app and processed in order to push this notification to this web client. So then uh, the room's not quite ready. The housekeeping staff is uh, folding the towels into swans, making everything perfect. Uh, and then when they come in to their lightning view, they set it to prepared. And of course, this same flow happens, and now it reflects that the room is ready. And so this is, this is real time. This is actually how fast the platform events are flowing. Now, they usually flow really fast. I haven't noticed slowdowns in months. Uh, but of course, being an asynchronous system, uh, you don't know that it's going to be instantaneous. Sometimes it might take 15 seconds. Sometimes it might take two. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the basic flow. But now I want to show you how you can go a little bit deeper with this. Um, so I'm going to reset this part of it so that I can uh, come back to it. And we're going to step over to some code. So this is the JavaScript code, which is it's just a function that's responding to this platform event. And uh, I'm going to hide that so we're a little bit, yeah, I think that's big enough for us all to see. So uh, the idea here is that uh, once we have kind of our, our system set up, the act of responding to events is actually as simple as receiving a payload and performing some operations on it. So in this case, we receive the payload, which is a room status update event. And if the status is booked, we set some properties and we send the notification. If it's prepared, we do something different. But uh, let's actually add a little something more interesting. So what we're going to do is take the same function. So I'm not going to uh, re recompose the function in real time. What I'm going to do is take this one that I have already made. And now you'll see the function looks very similar. But at this point, after it's prepared, uh, we actually use food preferences that have been stored for this guest in Salesforce in order to look up some restaurant recommendations. And we send another notification. So I'm going to save this and use, I'm currently using Terraform to deploy this. And so I'm going to uh, redeploy this function. And this is part of a Node.js app that's running on Heroku. And so I'm going to accept that. And it'll take about a minute for it to deploy. So if you're not familiar with, uh, with the way Heroku deployments work, there's a number of ways you can deploy. Um, in this case, I'm actually using the API directly through Terraform. We have a pretty decent Terraform integration. Um, I can speak to that since I do a lot of maintenance work on it. Um, and it's really great because it allows us to essentially set up this whole system 
uh, and, ad and essentially administrate it through a single, uh, a single configuration. So what's actually happening right now is that we've pushed this new package of JavaScript to Heroku, and it's running the standard build process. And that build process does like NPM install and uh, some bundling work, and then uh, deploys it into our runtime where it immediately goes live as a new app. OK, so that deployment is done. So I'm going to step back over to our demo. And once again, we see that uh, when the customer books the room, we see the new notification come up that your room isn't ready. This time, as the, as the housekeeping staff prepares the room, when they mark it as prepared, we get the first notification, and then this actually hits a, the Zomato API in order to get dinner recommendations based on the guest preferences. So this is the kind of stuff where it's like with these kinds of functions that lets you move this, this compute work out of Salesforce core and into a very flexible platform like Heroku where you can uh, use external APIs, where you can use all different kinds of libraries. Uh, once again, in this case with Node, you have all of NPM and all of the packages available. Um, so what have I actually shown you here? Let's step back over to the PowerPoint. So what we have in this demo is a Salesforce org with a custom process builder flow. And uh, that flow uh, creates a new platform event, uh, a room status update event, each time the room status changes. Uh, then on Heroku, we have two different apps running. We have a Node.js app running that is actually directly subscribed to the Salesforce streaming API. And it receives these events and invokes one of these handler functions. Um, and then the function actually handles the querying the external service and essentially routing the notification to the consumer app. And finally, we have a React.js app running on Heroku, which is actually that uh, customer experience app that I demonstrated. So uh, once, you, once you get into this pattern, it really sets you up for success with being able to add a lot of these kinds of nuanced customer engagement steps. Um, so that's basically, uh, that's basically the demo. So uh, to, to go further from here, obviously, I, these URLs are miserable. I'm sorry about that. We should have used a shortener. <laughs> um, so basically, we have the Platform Events Developer Guide, which is a great way, of course, to get, get, the, get the most facts about exactly how it works. Um, I wrote a blog post on the Heroku blog a couple months ago. Uh, that's the second bullet here called Reactive Programming with Salesforce Data. Uh, it, is, it essentially talks about this exact pattern with a Node.js app and links to some uh, sample code if you're interested in uh, trying it out with Node. And then finally, there's on the Salesforce blog uh, impressions of platform events. So between all these, hopefully it'll get you launched, get you started, headed in a good direction. Um, Rob, do you have yeah. something to say about this? <laughs> I would like to say something about this. We're really excited to announce uh, our first official certification for Heroku consultants and partners. So if you fall into either of those categories or you feel like it's relevant to you professionally, I'd strongly urge you to look into this. Uh, this is a Heroku architecture designer uh, certification. And uh, there's a URL where you can go and find out more of that. So. With that, we just want to say thank you very much for your time and attention today. We appreciate it. We'll be around for questions if there are any. Yeah. Thank you.